Oh, is it playing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our Audio Vice live stream. Great to be with everyone. Uh, we've got some special guests that I'll introduce here in just a minute, and we've got a great giveaway that we're excited to give away here in just a few minutes. Uh, let's get right in and welcome our two guests. And we actually have a third here jumping on here any second now. Uh, I, see, I see him coming on now. So welcome. Uh, welcome back, Nick. We'll introduce you here in just a second. We've got Chris Trojner with uh, Harmon Luxury Group. We've got Jim Garrett as well from Harmon. And then we've got uh, Gene DeLasado from Audioholics. So, gentlemen, nice welcome. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. If you wouldn't mind, introduce yourself. Tell everybody where you're from. If you've got anything to drink this evening, go ahead and let everybody know what that is and uh, what it is that you do for our good friends over there. At well, Park. thank you, Jonathan. Uh, my name is Chris Trojan. I'm the regional sales manager for Arcam and the rest of the Harmon Luxury product. Uh, so I, I manage the uh, the entire southeast of the, the United States. And um, you know, this is this is not my first live stream, right. but with you guys, so I'm I'm glad I'm happy to be back here with you, and um, really, let's jump in. I'm excited about the giveaway. It's huge. Awesome. <laughs> we are Weird. giving away an A25 integrated amplifier combined with an A5 streamer. So it's everything you need to power a great pair of speakers, and, and there it is. That's the combination right there. So that's our grand prize giveaway that you see on the screen there. It's a combination of an A25 integrated with an ST5 music streamer. In addition to that, uh, pay attention closely because for the best question that we get, we're also giving away an additional A25 for uh, for the for the participant that asked the best question to the group. So awesome, awesome. So if you've got questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments. We will get to as many of those as we can. We can see those coming across YouTube, uh, Facebook. And again, a great giveaway for best question. Again, thank you for the for Chris and the Harmon team for our uh, giveaway today. And, and yeah, cheers. It's happy hour. Cheers. Let us know what cheers. it is that you're drinking. If you've got something, what do you got? Tell the them what you got right there. Today, uh, it's, it's a safe one, but it's right. really good. This is a Heineken Zero, if you can see that. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's a work day, but, but it is happy hour. So, uh, you know, in order to stay focused, I got to have, you know, my edge, but I got to have my beer. So it's a perfect combination. Win-win. <laughs> well, cheers. Well, cheers. cheers. And just for fun, uh, there's some music streaming services out there that do like a, your artist of the year unwrapped. So maybe you can share who is your artist of the year. Oh, uh, you well, yeah, actually I was just going through that. I, I have accounts with Cobuzz, you know, my, one of my favorite music streamers, but Spotify title, I have them all. And, uh, the top artist for me almost across the board was an, uh, this artist called Tenere one. Uh, they're, they're a group, uh, from, West Africa from the Sahara region, uh, a nomadic group. Uh, so their music is heavily in influenced by Western African tradition, but they Very fuse cool. it with uh, American rock and blues. And it is incredible. It's a genre maybe not many people know about called desert blues, but definitely check it out. They've got a new album out called Amatso. And uh, it's, it's just amazing, amazing music. They've been together since the late seventies. Oh, very cool. It's awesome to see, you know, folks uh, let us know what, who is your artist of the year? Who did you listen to the most? And again, let us know where it is that you are joining us from. I see the Netherlands. I see Nashville, Florida, San Diego, all over the place, which is really cool to see just the, the big national audience that we have. So, Chris, welcome back. I think you may be up there as our top returning guest. So great to have <laughs> you again. Hey, and happy to close the year out with you guys. That's right. Absolutely. Well, Jim, thank you for joining us as well. If you wouldn't mind, tell everybody a little bit about what you do uh, at Harmon. And again, welcome. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, happy to be here with everybody. So I am the uh, Senior Director of Product Strategy and uh, Planning for the Luxury Audio Business Unit here at Harman. So we're responsible for certainly everything we do with the Arcam brand, but also all the other brands that are part of the Luxury Audio portfolio. Uh, it is not happy hour for me. I am based in Los Angeles. So uh, for us, we'll be it's enjoying a lovely <laughs> pure leaf unsweetened iced tea uh, as I... Uh, participate in this conversation this afternoon. So right in the middle of the workday for me. <laughs> well, 
Cheers, and uh, maybe later on this evening you can. I'm with you in spirit. We'll put it that with way. In spirit. There you <laughs> yes. go. Cheers. Who was your uh, Who was your artist of the year? If you, uh, you know, yeah. I, it, I've been sitting here thinking about this uh, ever since we got on this call. I, I have no clue <laughs> because a couple of challenges. First of all, in my role, I use about five different streams. All the streaming services. services. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and I also still am a, a physical media guy, so I buy a, an enormous amount of compact discs still and vinyl and stuff like that. So, uh, and I play in a band, so we're always learning Very extra cool. songs. So, I have no idea who it would be. Uh, I know there's some, been some really cool new stuff that I've picked up lately. Uh, we were just uh, at one of the holiday luncheons here yesterday, and a bunch of us that are in the bands were talking about, "Hey, what's new? What did you find?" So. Uh, Royal Blood's new album, a uh, great one if anybody's a fan of that. So Back from the Water, Back to the Water, I believe this is the name of the new one. So that's a great one. Uh, I'm a hard rock guy. Uh, there's a band yeah. out of Japan called Anthem. If anybody is into uh, Japanese hard rock heavy metal, you know Loudness Anthem is uh, in that same vein. So if you're cool. a fan of traditional old school metal, speed metal, hard rock stuff, uh, that's another great one. Just, I listen again to just about everything. So it's hard for me to say anything specifically and too many services for one of them to say this was the yeah. one we chose. Got it. <laughs> so, what, is, what is your uh, instrument of choice? Uh, I'm a drummer and a singer. So uh, um, cool. yeah, and I wanna be cool. bass player, so. There you go. And Chris, you're also a drummer too, right? So that, that is correct. And um, behind me, actually, I have my vibraphone. You can see there. I do, <laughs> do dabble in some percussion as well. So very cool. Well, Jim, welcome. Gene, welcome back again. Uh, returning guest. Great to have you again. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, Jim, I'm going to drink. You could drink vicariously through me. I'm doing uh, Angel's Envy bourbon. So it's oh, there you go. One. Yeah, it's actually a good. You don't need to put ice in it. It's actually <laughs> a good drinking whiskey. Um, yeah, so it's great to be on a live stream with you guys. I always love interviewing Jim and videos. He's just the type of person that is great on camera and uh, love being here with you guys. I just finished my bench test of the Arkham A25. Yeah. It's on our website. You can talk, maybe link to it if you guys want to see the Absolutely. full report. We'll dive into that here in just a few minutes. Absolutely. And I'd say my artist of the year has to be Stephen Wilson. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his work, okay. but he's he's a prog rock guy. He's been keeping that kind of genre of rock alive for the last couple of decades. He started out with Porcupine Tree, Blackfield. He's in like five different bands, but his solo work has been phenomenal. Uh, Harmony Kodaks is his latest album, and it's in spatial audio, and it's one of the best spatial audio mixes. And I'm proud to say like 12 years ago, I introduced him to Dolby Atmos. He didn't even know what it was. And now he's mixing stuff in Atmos. And if you guys have Apple Music or Tidal mm -hmm. and you've got a spatial audio set up in your house, definitely check out Harmony Codex. And I recommend you have a good subwoofer because it's infrasonic bass in a lot of the tracks. And it's just beautifully mixed. It's a nod to the 70s prog rock, but it's with a modern twist. And I just love that album. It's excellent start from, from start to finish. Very, very cool. Well, welcome back. Again, you, we're a huge fan of your channel and uh, all the content that you you produce and create, which is just a huge, huge benefit for the industry. I know you got a big, big following. So thank you for joining us as well, uh, today again. And Nick, welcome back. Good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me on again. <laughs> yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I normally do theater design, but I'm also a huge two channel nerd. So anybody knows me yeah. knows I'm big a two channel and and music and everything. So for my uh, for my artist, you are one for, of those uh, Swifties. So tell us which one is your oh, favorite. Yeah, I mean, you know, Taylor Swift. Uh, oh, no, I, I, I'm horrible about it, uh, but I don't know any of her albums uh, up top of my head. But uh, anyhow, my like so my music taste, whatever I'm kind of playing at the time, you guys can see it. I play guitar, uh, kind of whatever I'm into is what I listen to over and over. So this year was big uh, bluegrass year for me. So cool. coming from moving from Appalachia to down here to South Carolina, uh, I was listening to a lot of bluegrass and Sturgill Simpson did a lot of uh, really cool bluegrass albums uh, a couple years back. So I listened to those quite a bit and Tyler Childers kind of in the same vein. So it was kind of a Appalachian country slash bluegrass year for me, but as for drinks, I actually got to go back up to Asheville last weekend, and I picked up an espresso stout called Griddle from Burial. Uh, really, really good stout. If you guys are into stouts and espresso, I recommend it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Very cool. Well, cheers, everyone. Again, if you've got something that you're drinking you want to share with the group, let us know. And if you've got your artist, favorite artist, go ahead and drop it in the comments as well. 
and we'll get to as many questions. My artist of the year, according to Spotify, is a band called Need to Breathe. They're out of uh, Greenville, South Carolina, kind of a southern rock band. They've been together for about 20 years, and uh, I'm a big fan of those guys. I, I like them. They definitely can rock out a good live show for sure. And I'm drinking a Dos Aquis Amber. Tonight. Something <laughs> something kind of light, yeah. a little Mexican lager, nothing too crazy. All right, let's jump right in. Again, uh, go ahead. If you've got a question, put it in the comments. We've got some great giveaways that we'll get to here in just a little bit, and we'll get to as many audience questions as we can. Chris, Jim, maybe you guys can kick it off a little bit. Tell us, for those who maybe aren't as familiar with Arcam, you can tell us a little bit about Arcam in general, sort of uh, all the different products that you guys focus on with Arcam, and then let's dive right into sort of what went into the thought and the design of the new radio series. Yeah, Arcam's a company, Jonathan, that's been around for nearly 50 years now. And, you know, so we're well steeped in the, the hi-fi tradition. Um, we, you know, we, we're, we're known for building great amplifiers. Uh, that does translate over to the home theater world as well. We build some incredible receivers, AVRs. Um, the, the Radius series for us, uh, this, this is a new ID for Arcan. So it's, it's, a very, um, it's, it's a very different look. Um, and yeah. what, I think what you'll Pulse find- yeah, it's a very, I think, beautiful, beautiful looking equipment. Um, and, and I think what you'll find here is that, um, you know, in this industry, what we what we often find is, you know, we, we have customers that, you know, keep, continue to repeat and, you know, customers are constantly upgrading their systems. Um, this is an opportunity at certain price points to, to find some new customers, new enthusiasts about music. That's why we have, you know, all the latest technologies, including the music streamer that we're giving away here today. Um, so it incorporates all the, all the modern features that you would love with a modern elegant look, but the audio file performance that you'd come to expect from a, you know, 50 year old company. So um, I'd love to have Jim uh, take over and, and explain the product lineup through it. Uh, you know, for the radio series, which is going to be our focus of the conversation today. So, Jim, what do you got for us? Yeah. So uh, with the radio series, this was uh, really a kind of a refresh of the entire brand. We did a big launch event for this back uh, a couple of weeks ago in London. Uh, the heritage of the company, for those that don't know, uh, RCAM is an acronym, Amplification and Recording Cambridge is where the name comes from. Uh, so as Chris mentioned, the, the very first product we had was the A60, it was an integrated amplifier. So uh, that is the heritage of the brand. It's always been about very high performance at a modest price point for the products. Um, but we have uh, been living with the HDA range of products that's been around for several years now. And when it came time to refresh those, we wanted to really push the envelope, not only in the performance, but significantly in the industrial design, uh, target some new customers, uh, hopefully open up the brand to some new people that really love music, but and maybe are not familiar with the products before. So there was a lot of research that went into this in terms of the industrial design. We have an in-house industrial design firm that's part of Harman overall. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of research that went into the customer archetypes. Who are they going to be the people that would buy this? Of course, obviously, the traditional Arcam customer is something we weren't going to move away from, uh, but we wanted to uh, open it up into new customers as well. So uh, all of the things that you see in the look of the product was a, a key part of the development. So we wanted to make products that had a very simple design. So you see they're very clean on the front and a minimum number of controls on it. Uh, the industrial design, there's a lot of inspiration that went into that in terms of color trends and materials. The Radia Yellow is a unique accent that's really not seen on any other products on the market. And it really kind of uh, replicates energy when you see that kind of color, which is what music is all about. So that was something that was a key part of, of what we would put into it. And as you see, as trends and things are moving forward, you'll see yellow is becoming a very popular color now as well, too. I think you can even get a iPhone in yellow now. So, um, so those were some of the things that we wanted to put into the product. Um, these first uh, five products that we did is a range of three integrated amplifiers. This is what we introduced. You're seeing some images from the uh, launch event that are on the screen here uh, back in London. So uh, there were three amplifiers, the A5, the A15, the A25, and then two digital source players, which are the ST5, which is a music streamer, and then the CD5 was the compact disc player. So if you're familiar with the current product range, these are replacing basically the SA10, SA20 mm -hmm. uh, that are in a product range today. Uh, CDS50, uh, the, the, this player is obviously about half the price of what a CDS50 is, and it's not a streamer, it's a dedicated CD player. So technically sort of replaces it, but it's not necessarily a direct replacement in terms of features and functionality with it. So. So that is the uh, the first phase, uh, first phase of the the radio series that we've introduced. So it was a pretty exciting launch event. 
Yeah, I had the privilege of being able to attend the event in London back in, I think it was in mid-October or so. And you guys October just did a fantastic third, yeah. yep, yep. You guys did a fantastic job. It was just a lot of fun to be able to go to, to London. I think it was in the, the Soho area yep. and uh, be able to see, you know, just a lot of the heritage of Arkham to meet with a lot of the team. And you guys had even one of the original founders in attendance as well. Is that correct? So you were able to just to really get a good sense of like the heritage. And then, you know, you guys obviously did a great, really cool event, you know, in a record store. Um, maybe tell everyone a little bit more about, you know, some, some of the thoughts behind this event. And you guys did some great sort of video vignettes as well, you know, sharing about the product launch and, you know, who it was designed for and those type of things. Yeah. So there are a lot of aspects to that. Of course, as you mentioned, John Dawson, who's the co-founder of Arkham, he still works for us. Uh, he was created this brand back in their college days as they were part of the Amplification Recording Club that was on campus. And as he likes to tell the story, you know, it was creating that first product was they kind of did it for beer money, if you will, yeah. make something that maybe their friends would think was pretty cool. And then they went on to sell like 35,000 pieces over the life of their wow. product. So once one of the first magazines got a hold of it and did a review, they're like, this is a phenomenal piece of kit. So we uh, maybe had something to it. So. Yeah, so it's been a great part of that. He's also um, the proponent of the Clash G amplifier technology for us. So he's mm -hmm. been you know, heavily involved in the design of a lot of the products that we've done. And specifically in the case of this one, the A25, which is a G class power amplifier. So, so with all the heritage that we had in a brand, for those that have seen the new products, there's some little Easter eggs, a uh, little Union Jack on the front of the products and a lot of things that are a nod to, uh, uh, a nod to the heritage of the company. And um, so that was something that we wanted to bring together in that launch event that we put together. So we wanted it to be something momentous just because it was not necessarily just, hey, here's a new product, but we were really refreshing the brand overall. So you see there was an update to the logo, a little refinement to the logo, a new website that went live at that time. And then um, basically kind of new campaign assets and brand guidelines and everything that went with this to highlight the new radio design series uh, that was put into play on these first few products. So we incorporated that. That's why you see all the, the yellow and the yellow lighting that was there. As you recall, it was a pretty dramatic entrance uh, to the event when you walked yeah, down that hallway. Was, so guy up here right here yeah yep and then we had you know some specially themed cocktails that went with uh the the customers and the research that we had uh into who we were gonna uh, be selling these products to yeah. and then i we want really cool things of course everybody got to go off and listen to the products and get some demonstrations mm -hmm. there but then we also had some very nice uh, live music throughout the evening too so uh if you heard our our uh, uh singer guitarist that she performed a set with us and then we had a a local rock band that uh, got up and performed for us there. So we kind of wanted to bring all the elements of, of music and every everything that was about the uh, Arkham brand heritage into one cool event. And I, yeah. I think it was a pretty pretty great evening. No, you guys nailed it. I'll just share a little bit of my own personal experience. You know, myself and a few of the folks from Audio Vice had the opportunity to see really some early stage prototypes. I think it was probably a CES last year, at the beginning of this year. Um, yeah. And, you know, kind of an unveiling of here's where we're going directionally with the design and the aesthetic and sort of the the revamping of the brand, if you will. And uh, to be able to see it kind of come full circle and then launch at this event and be able to hear it in person, I think you guys just did a fantastic job. It was really cool to see, you know, from conception, here's who we're going after, sort of, you know, broadening our, the audience that we're trying to attract with this type of a product, um, the affordability, the performance, and then again, to see it at this, this event, you guys really, really nailed it. So again, it was great for us to be able to experience, you know, as part of Audio Vice, and we really appreciate the partnership. Um, Gene, I know you were able to also. To that yeah, point, uh, I was going to say, uh, it's great. You know, you, you brought up the fact that you got a sneak peek, and I think you know you and the leadership team, you know, had some input in the direction that the, this product is, and we we appreciate um, your feedback and your input. It does it does go into the product design, you know, and th this is the end result of it. So thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was our it was our, our privilege for sure. Uh, Gene, you had the opportunity to, to hear this and test it. Maybe give us some of your reactions to the new the new series. Well, you know, aesthetically, just aside from the bench test stuff, I actually really love the look of the Arcam product. I've never actually had one in house, but immediately when I took it out of the box, I love the yellow theme that followed through. Whether it was the halo lights photos, on yeah. the volume control and the input selector. And the, and the yellow accents at the top of the unit on the chassis and then on the remote control. You know, at some point in the industry, I think everybody just decided to abandon lighting up the volume control. And I'm glad that you guys brought that back because I love that. I love seeing an illuminated volume control. And I just think it adds ambience when you're listening to music. 
and you can see this in your room and it kind of gives you a pride of ownership. And I think this unit looks really good on a credenza because it's, it's low profile. You could pick it up in one hand. I mean, <laughs> that's, I mean, it, that's the nice thing about the class G design is you've cut down on the amount of heat sinking you need because it's a more efficient design. And I see that there's a lot of questions in here. People asking what class G is. Mm -hmm. And if I could just quickly define. Yeah, please. Quick, absolutely. Chris, you could step in as well. But basically, Class G is Class AB, except you've got two rails. You've got a low rail and a high rail. And the advantage of doing that is Class AB's highest efficiency is when the amplifier is at full unclipped power. And at that point, you get 50 to 60% efficiency. But with a Class G, most of the time, the amplifier is running in low power mode. And that means you have a high quiescent current, and you're wasting power, and your efficiency drops in maybe 30 or 40%. That's not the case with the RCAM because it drops to the lower voltage rail. I think there's there's two capacitors that are rated at 50 volts and two that are rated at 80 volts. So it drops to the low rail and that allows it to operate in a higher efficiency rating. And as a result, I mean, I had the thing on my bench test and and I was running it for a couple of hours and it never got hot. You know, it maybe got when I was loading it down with resistors, it got a little warm to the touch. But generally speaking, just sitting in idle, the thing is cool. I mean, it has it approaches the efficiency of Class D. I think it's probably close to about 70%, which is really good. And as a result, you're getting decent power. You're getting 100 watts a channel at 8 ohms, honest 100 watts, both channels driven full bandwidth. And it does about 150 honest in 4 ohms. So it is a little bit current limiting, obviously, um, because it's not a huge amplifier. But it does it well. And I don't know, can I share my screen just to show... Um, I think I've got a couple of these graphs here if you want to um, you want to walk through them. Yeah, well, okay. So that's the phono. I mean, I think we was talking to Jim about that before. Uh, the phono preamp has a little bit of a roll off at 20 hertz, but Jim was telling me that that's a standard practice. I've, I've not typically measured that, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the distortion versus voltage sweep. What's really impressive about how RCAM ran this unit is the, it has a very low noise, very low distortion. I think the Cyanad approached 100 dB, and that was out of the preamp output. But what shocked me was when I checked the amplifier section, typically when you measure the amplifier section in a receiver or an integrated amp, you'll lose about 10 dB of noise of distortion just going through that. But RCAM did such a great job of gain matching the preamp to the power amp. And I think they ran the voltage really high on the volume control to get the noise down. And as a result, the, I had to check this like two or three times. The sign ad did not really drop out of the out of the amplifier output. So at one watt, that thing was like approaching 98 dB sign ad, which is tenths of a thousandth of a dB of uh, distortion, really low distortion. So I commend you guys and your signal to noise ratio. I was able to recreate all of your test scenarios. I was in within a couple of dB of, of your test scenario. So RCAM is conservative in the way they rate their amplifier. And I would say that it's an honest 100 watts of channel at 8 ohms. You can have no problem driving. I would personally you know, recommend a reasonably medium to high sensitivity speaker with this amp because it's not a powerhouse. And it's funny because I recommended in my report, before I even saw the audio advice one, I recommended the JBL HDI 3600 or 3800s with this. And I think Harrison said, this is a great pairing with the HDI 1600s, which is the same series of speaker. And I think that would be, Jim, you probably have, or Chris, you guys have experience with this at Harman. I think the HDI series JBL speakers would go really well with this amp. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a couple of things that you touched on there. So with Class G, just to back up to that for a second, the one real benefit that you see in all those measurements there, ultra low distortion, and they really behave and operate more like a Class A amplifier under most listening conditions and really mm -hmm. are operating like a Class A amp up to, I think, uh, 20, 25 watts in the case of this particular model before you're really more into a full AB design on it. Uh, but they also have very high current capability. So um, interesting uh, in thinking about the speakers, we've actually found that they are very comfortable driving about anything. And I think in some of the measurements you had too, you had some power up over 250 watts, depending on the impedance. The dynamic power is really good. And, and I yeah. couldn't take the top off because it was like some glue or something. And I didn't want to mess with it because it's an audio device sample. So I stole, <laughs> they appreciate it. From, yes. <laughs> yeah, I stole an image from Harrison's video. And he took the, somehow he got the top off the unit and you guys use a healthy toroid power transformer yeah. in there. Yeah. So there, there are some competitors that use SMPS and the, the disadvantage to some of the SMPS is you don't get a lot of headroom. 
And yeah. if you look at the dynamic power, I think I measured almost 2 dB of dynamic headroom. And that's mm -hmm. because you're using a linear supply and you've got a, a healthy capacitor bank. So yeah. even though it's not a powerhouse amplifier, it could hit the transients really well. It has a lot of margin in it. And that's another reason why you probably found it's a good pairing with you know, any of the speakers you tried at your place too. Yeah, and I think you know from a price point of where that product sits too, when you look at the type of speaker that somebody's likely to pair with an integrated amplifier at that price point, uh, it's gonna work with just about anything out there. We, at the launch event, we did, uh, you mentioned the HDI, uh, the bookshelf loudspeaker in that range. So the 1600 is what we use with actually the smaller one, the A5. And then we've been using, uh, at the event, we use the L100 Black Edition uh, with the A25, but uh, you mentioned the HDI 3600 or 3800, uh, a fantastic loudspeaker that would work with it. Of course, we do make a few other brands of loudspeakers <laughs> under our portfolio that would work well yeah. with it, but it, it really does uh, work well with a pretty wide variety of, of products. So and I would expect at that price point, somebody's going to put this with a nice pair of floor standing loudspeakers most likely. So yeah yeah <clears throat> and jim i won't be shy uh the the rebel brand of loudspeakers would be a great combination i mean certainly certainly up to the uh performa series um F, you know f205s f206 208s and uh the concerta series f36s f35s you know slim compact highly efficient design would, would just be an incredible uh, audio system for anybody's standards or some l82s i think that would be a, you know good combo as well yeah Absolutely. yeah that's actually yeah that will be the demonstration at uh, ces this year so very cool yeah we had uh chuck simmons asking if they could handle a forum load for the a25 yes you think you guys think yeah. it's plenty there yeah i mean i tested it a forum earlier they, um <clears throat> he measured the forum uh, capacity at about 150 watts so absolutely. yeah honest 150 and that like i said there was a good dynamic i think it was almost 200 and I got to look at the power table, but it was like 250 watts dynamic headroom. So, yeah, yeah, it definitely would work. Um, the the only thing I would ask you guys, since I have you on live stream, is if you make a replacement to this model in the future, is the pre outs. You know, bump that up to two volts RMS because it clips at one, or just dump that feature altogether because I doubt anybody's using it as a preamp, and put a subwoofer output with base management or level control. I think that would be more useful for the most users. Yeah, as we discussed uh, in some of the back and forth on there, obviously this was designed as an integrated amplifier under the assumption that this is a singular component that someone would buy, so they're not likely to use it as a preamp. Uh, perhaps they'll use subwoofers with it, um, but uh, yeah, you know, as uh, we move towards the future, you may see additional products with uh, some additional features and capabilities. So. I'd love to see a unit with double the power if you have like an A50 or whatever, you know, down the <laughs> pipeline. I would love to measure that. <laughs> an A5000 with quadruple the power is what I <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> 500 watts of power. <laughs> Brian said, will my wife accept this as an acceptable Christmas present? It will also require Coach Purse. <laughs> Best of luck, my friend. Best of luck. Nick, you got a couple of ones? Yeah, I was just kind of going through. So... Casey Jarman said, how well does the Radio Series play with the last generation of RCAM products for those who, of us who are upgrading slowly? Great question. Yeah, oh, well, it's, you know, it's an evolution, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of what we learned, you know, for the last series, the FMJ series, uh, we, we applied, you know, to the Radio Series. It's, you know, if you've, if you've got some legacy equipment, it, it, will, it will work great. Absolutely. So on the same, on the same vein, what step up are we getting from the last series of integrated amplifiers that, you know, besides we, and obviously what we can see is the aesthetics, but inside under the hood, what are we, what are we seeing? Yeah, there's a definite performance improvement versus the predecessor units. In this case, like we said, the, these first three models are really replacing the SA 10 and 20. Um, so when you look at that standpoint, there were a lot of critical listening that went into these choosing in, down to the individual components. Uh, the guys spent a lot of time there also identifying different materials. You know, what did we make the top cover out of and how did that affect the sound quality of the unit in terms of, you know, eddy currents and things that would run through the circuitry inside of it. So there was a lot of, of 
really trying to push the sound quality uh, even higher. And I think those were great sounding products before, but you know, we felt we could do better in that respect. And so that was certainly a key part of the development of these was let's push the envelope there on the digital side. You know, the, the performance and capability of the DAC is greater than what was in the previous units. Uh, some unique features in the case, obviously the A25 with USB-C as an input now to the DAC. And then of course, um, for those that are interested, these have a uh, high-res Blu-ray capability or Blu-ray, Bluetooth capability, uh, but it is two-way in these as well. So you can use your phone and pair it as a source if you wanted to, but you could also pair your Bluetooth headphones to this if you wanted to do a private listening session with them. So there are definitely some features and things that didn't exist in the predecessor units. There's definite performance improvement step when you get to these. Uh, and then of course the industrial design I think is a, a pretty radical uh, change. And I, I think these are gorgeous units myself. So. Oh yeah. Well, that's, so, so you touch on something pretty interesting there that it, you were talking about high res Bluetooth. This is something that I know the technology has been around for a bit. It's Aptex HD. Is that what you guys have? Aptex there? adaptive is what's in these units. Yeah. Which awesome. is just basically their latest codec that is backwards compatible with all of the other Aptex versions that came before it. So. Yeah, which I think is really cool with the with the Bluetooth headphones because there's actually quite a few headphones that are starting. Well, I mean, they've been coming out for a while, but I know there's new iterations coming out where you can get better bit rate and bit depth with Bluetooth, which is which is interesting to me. So, but do you guys know how that kind of works? I know without going to the complete weeds, but you know, because you would think that Bluetooth is kind of limited in bandwidth. Is there you know a simplified way to explain that technology? Well, Bluetooth has certainly been improving significantly in terms of sound quality. And now it depends on uh, what type of platform you're on here. If those of us that are iOS versus Android, there may be different uh, uh, capabilities <laughs> in there because there's a lot of the higher res stuff that is limited more to the Android platform than it is to iOS in that case. But I think one of the key things about this is, you know, Bluetooth, a lot of times we get in these conversations like, oh, it's a garbage connection, it's poor sound quality, whatever it may be. Well, it's actually can be a very good sounding uh, connection these days. And so that's something we wanted to take advantage of in that case. But it's also just such a convenient way to pair a device. And there's so many people that have come up to it uh, through you know, just the convenience model of it, where they've had a portable Bluetooth speaker or their headphones or all these other things that you use Bluetooth in in a daily uh, usage scenario. So it was something that was like, people still want it. <laughs> and it has been a, a fairly high demand feature on it. So the challenge is, yeah, how do we make it sound as good as it can possibly sound? Uh, in the case of um, uh, the Aptex codec, that there's been a number of generations of that, of Aptex and Aptex HD and Aptex Adaptive as they've continued to improve the algorithm there, and it has improved in resolution capability as it's gone along. So um, again, just a pretty cool way there, and I think when you think of music as more of a social event, it's a nice way that not only can I pair my own device, but if a friend comes over and says, hey, we're talking, right? Who's your favorite artist? I've never heard that one. Oh, hey, connect to my system. Let's give it a listen. So yeah. there's some pretty cool ways that you can take advantage of that ease of connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd rather definitely rather have more features than than less. Yeah, especially with having just a, such a simple looking, you know, devices of, as a whole uh, to be able to pack it with those. Some people were asking questions about uh, tone controls. You guys opted out of doing tone controls with RCAM for the most part. Is there a philosophy behind that or is that just yeah, something you guys didn't want to add? Yeah, it's maybe more of a greater Harman philosophy, but um, we just we stick to the neutrality of the sound and the accuracy of the sound. And in the case of anything that's voiced on like a loudspeaker is to the Harman target curve as well. So mm -hmm. Um, it's another one of those things where, you know, the debate rages on internally customers are like, well, I'd like bass and treble controls and like, well, we made these things sound the best they can possibly sound. So why would you want to <laughs> screw it up if you will, right. By changing it. But obviously that's, that's a, uh, uh, a debate that, um, did not see the light of day in this one, right. Because they don't have tone controls in them. So. Mm -hmm. Do you guys mind if I throw up a super chat question? I'm not sure if it's going to show up on audio devices. Yeah, channel. sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll definitely incorporate those so, as well. It's not letting me do it. Um, okay, so here's the question. It says, when everyone seems to go back vintage style and it's very popular, you took a completely different design approach. What was your reasoning behind that? 
Yeah, so as we mentioned, there was a, a, a lot of research that went into the industrial design of these. And I saw one of the questions that came in earlier too was, did we do that ourselves or was it outsourced? Uh, it is an in-house industrial design firm that we have. It's part of uh, Harman. It's an agency called Human. Um, and we have a dedicated industrial designer that is part of our luxury audio business unit. So he is the one that is responsible for the design of these products. But obviously the uh, the full capabilities of that internal resource came to bear in this in terms of the research that we put into it. So uh, thinking about the types of customers and where we were going to go. Uh, yes, the vintage aesthetic is there. That's something that we currently offer, of course, in the JBL Classic Series electronics, uh, which look very much like, you know, 1960s, 1970s components. Uh, but in the case of Arcam, uh, it's a different brand, a different customer uh, target that we were going after. And so we wanted to have a completely different look uh, for the product. And so the simplicity mantra that was part of the design, which you can see in a number of ways uh, in the product with the limited number of of uh, controls on the front of the unit, uh, some of the design elements like burying all the antennas into the cowl that's on the back of the unit so we didn't have an antenna farm on the back, uh, the color choices and materials that were used in it, all of that came out of that research into customer preferences and where design trends are going, uh, both in terms of materials and colors and things like that. So uh, that was uh, how all of that kind of came together to create this radio design language. Cool. Yeah, Jim, great, great answer there. And, you know, to, to Gene's question, we, and you kind of hit on this, the JBL Classic is, it's a throwback to that mid-century modern look. It's really, I mean, you know, it's really stunning. We have a whole new JBL Classic line of electronics that match that with wood panels to give you that, you know, mid-century modern look and, and styling to that. Um, the, the Arcam is just, you know, it, it sometimes that, that classic look can be polarizing to some people. Some people um, are are drawn to attracted to it. Uh, the, the Radius series, I think, um, you know, attracts a different type of aesthetic and a different type of customer. So, a bit off topic question from what we've been discussing: Do you guys offer any type of like home theater bypass uh, in these units, or are you better off just finding a volume range and turning it up to it when if you if you want to use it as a uh, as a power amp essentially. Yeah, we did not include any features like that in these particular units. Again, the focus of these was as the heart of a music system. Yeah. So yeah, it was not, yeah. not a feature we included in these. We make a fantastic series of AVRs, as Chris mentioned. So <laughs> well, that, that too, I mean <laughs> I mean it's it's a lot of the technologies, a lot of the features that that go into the product. I mean yeah. I'm I'm a classic audiophile. I, I love my two channel music, but um, you know I have an Arcam receiver um, that that acts as my processor, and I I love some of the features that that those products deliver, like Dirac room control and and mm -hmm. certain things that just the the stereo world that that doesn't do. So, um, yeah. you know it, it's it it is it is a home theater product, but music sounds really really good on on our on our multi channel mm -hmm. products as well. Oh yeah, I think yeah, I'm, I'm a proud there. owner of an Arcam AVR myself. <laughs> I think yeah, I know. So I, me and Jonathan, I got Jonathan into it as well. I was yeah, I've, yeah. I've got an Arcam uh, AVR, and I was like, Jonathan, you got to get one of these as well. Yeah, I got, I have the uh, AVR 31, and I've got uh, Direct set up on it as well. I'm super happy with it. I, not to get too far ahead, but some folks have certainly asked, is there anything you can share in terms of just with this new overall design and aesthetic? Will you see that uh, potentially cascade or roll into some of the other? products that you guys offer? Uh, obviously, yes. Uh, this is the new, as we said, not just this first five products that we brought out, but it was a whole brand refresh. So mm -hmm. everything that we do moving <coughs> forward will move to this new design language. So if you're familiar with the heritage of the products and you go way back in the day, you know, there's defined eras of uh, the product families that were in there from the old alphas and uh, Chris mentioned FMJ. Of course, that was around for about 20 years. Uh, HDA is the design language we're in uh, up until the time of the launch of these and then uh, radio moving forward. So in the future products that you see, is, as we said, obviously this was phase one, these first five products. And as I mentioned, we didn't necessarily replace all of the HDA hi-fi hi products in this first go around. So you can imagine that uh, radio will find itself uh, covering up the next generation of products that we bring out. Yeah. What went into the, the name radio? Any, any great insight there? 
Yeah. So, uh, well, a lot of things go into the names of products, right? Uh, sure. Way more details than anyone ever. If you if you needed something to put yourself at sleep at night, you talk about how <laughs> hard it can be to name products and then get it through legal and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. in this case, um, a lot of times the name from the product can come out of the inspiration for the product itself, or in this case, the specific industrial design uh, that mm -hmm. came out of it. So um, uh, Jason, our designer, as he was working on this, um, we initially called the design language Eclipse because as we were looking at the yellow, it was like the radiance of the sun and this halo ring that became the kind of icon. And so if you guys remember, as we ran up to the launch of Radia, the teaser campaign that we ran was just this yellow halo ring um, and, you know, the next generation of hi-fi coming in October or whatever. So um, that design language was there. So the more that we looked into it and thought about it, it was kind of like, well, uh, you know, radia <laughs> it kind of comes to it and with the color of yellow and the sun and the radiance of it all together uh is where it really came from so in this case radia came out of the industrial design language but it just Very thought it worked really well as, as a product name too so yeah definitely definitely is, well, what was interesting is uh you know a bunch of us here in in uh, north america is shortly after the we did this launch event there was the uh i guess it was a was it a lunar eclipse so yes yeah, the lunar eclipse that we had right about that same time so we were watching it live on uh like the nasa channel as it moved across from you know the southwest down through texas right. and everything and it was i don't know if it can actually be seen there. oh that's cool yeah i took a screenshot uh and it looked well, I, I sent it to uh uh, one of my coworkers, I'm like, look, uh, the the sun and the moon are participating in our marketing campaign for the new product. Right. But it the literally looks moon, like literally the front of the line, product. Right. And it's like, yeah. no, that was the moon in front of the sun. So, uh, so it just kind of made sense, I guess, uh, in a whole scheme of things. So, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, we have we've had some questions on the ST5. We haven't discussed that as much. So, you guys want to just kind of go through and tell us about, you know why you would want to use you know the st5 along with these is it better to use i think we actually had a question as well is it better to use the dac in the st5 or in the a25 are they the same are they different well the dac in the a25 is better than the dac in the st5 so the st5 and the uh, basically all the products in the range are using the same dac except for the a25 it steps up partially because of its price point but it is a, a little higher performance stack in that, and it adds USB-C capability. So in that case, you'd want to take advantage of the A25. Uh, there's not streaming in any of these three amplifiers. So uh, first and foremost, if you want to add streaming audio to it, the ST5 is the way to get it into the system. Um, so we designed it to be a companion to it. Of course, we still have the product, the ST60, which is about twice the price of what this one is. Uh, so we wanted to look to this to be a more affordable way to bring streaming into the range and to be a better companion product for the lower price. The A25 is the, the highest price of these three integrated amplifiers. So uh, the ST5 becomes a great companion then to work with these. So it gives you uh, streaming capability, high res capability that you can do with it. It's a rune endpoint. It does Chromecast. It does AirPlay. Um, so it's a great way to, to work together. And then we included a communications cable as well that see when you compare the two units together, then they can operate as one. So when you're streaming to the ST5, it can wake up the amplifier, switch to the amp to the input that you've got it assigned to, and uh, then run the volume. It actually goes through a pass-through from the ST5 and runs the volume control in the uh, integrated amplifier. So it's just a more simplistic way to do it. So they were really designed to be companions right out of the gate. So. Whoever wins this uh, giveaway here today is going to have a pretty awesome uh, stack of components. That's for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, you 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 just went, okay. Yeah. I was, I was going to say you just went through the the list of all the um, all the ways you can use the A5. Uh, in addition to what you just mentioned, there's Spotify Connect. There's Tidal Connect. And we yeah. also have a proprietary app that you can use that that works really really well with this product as well. Um, plus yeah. A remote, that, plus a remote. Yeah. Control. Right. Yeah. So the primary uh, point, like Chris mentions on here, there is an app to get, you know, getting products as a lot of the research. We do tons of research into like how do people use products? What do they like? What do they dislike? And when you look at uh, any Wi-Fi enabled product, the number one pain point is getting a product on your network. It's like the most difficult thing because you go from the excitement of I was just an audio advice and I bought this cool product and I got to take it home and, and connect it. And then it, your happiness turns to 
I'm annoyed because this is too difficult to do. So what we want to make sure was how quick can we get you listening to music with it? So the app is the, is the quick way to do it. So uh, they actually recognize each other via Bluetooth. And then so you immediately see the unit and it's just like, okay, this is my network. This is my password. And you got your device connected. So it's a very simplistic way to do it. There are some uh, streaming services capable in there. As, as Chris mentioned, we've got uh, the units all have Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect in it. But then within the app, you can have Cobas, Amazon Music, Internet Radio, Podcast all those types of things are, are found in the app if you want to do those as well. But of course, a lot of people are still going to use the native apps for those particular streaming services and, and uh, use it through Chromecast AirPlay. The advantage of through the app is that you can get full res because of course you're you're limited to 48K, 96K, depending on if you're a AirPlay or a, a, a Chromecast user, so. Gene, was there yeah, something you want to say you guys use a you guys use a really high quality DAC in the A25, like use yeah. a ESS Pro DAC and it shows in the measurements and I, it handles up to 384 kilohertz uh, sampling rate if you use the USB part and it even supports DSD. So if you guys are into SACD and you have a PC plugged in with some files, that's awesome. Um, I did have a quick question because in the specs it says it's, it's set for filter one. I didn't see an option to change the filter settings on the DAC. Is that even an option or is that just how you guys program the unit? Uh, I think, Chris, you may know better than I do because you've had uh, more time in the field with him. But I think we've traditionally given a couple of filter choices with him. So it should be in there in the menu. Oh, so OK. Yeah, I didn't see that. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I've not been that deep in the menu and the setup in it uh, because all the events that I go to, this is already done by my team. So uh, but I would uh, imagine that's the case in there. We can confirm for you. Sure. Yeah, we'll let you know, Gene. We can take it offline. And we, we're on streaming. I'm going to mention the thing that we've seen a bunch in the comments so far. Uh, people are asking about Rune. <laughs> I, I know we kind of discussed this beforehand. So do you guys just want to yeah, go ahead and talk about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I would imagine that most of the people that are listening to this out there are very familiar with what Rune is, what it does. Mm -hmm. um, so for those that are not, it, I guess the basic way to think of it is just a, a very cool way to aggregate all of your content. So um, it's a fantastic application in that respect that you think of all these, as I mentioned at the beginning, right? I use like five different streaming services, and then I have CDs and all the stuff that's ripped to my hard drive and whatnot. So how do you find one easy interface as opposed to switching back and forth between all those different ones? And that's really what Rune gives you uh, is a really cool way uh, to just aggregate all of that content into one simple UI. Uh, so it's a fantastic thing in that respect. And then you can have it living on your network at home and anything that is a Rune ready or Rune capable product, you could connect to it and you can have, you know, up to about six different streams running at once with it. Um, and then the rabbit hole you can go down is you can learn so much more about it. So when you're listening to an artist and it's like, well, here's some other stuff. If you want to learn more about that artist, you can, but then also here's some other things that you might like for it. So uh, it, and if you're into that kind of stuff like me and when I have all the OCD details of everything in it, then it's, yeah. then it's a rabbit hole you can go down pretty quickly. And it, instead of just being a passive listening in the background, it's like, this has my full attention now. I'm going to listen to it. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what Rune is. Um, and then for those that did not see the announcement, um, we acquired uh, Rune about a week ago. Uh, so they are part of the uh, Harmon uh, family now as well. So, and we use just a quick plug. It's a great you know, Nick. I know you're a big fan. We use Rune as a service in both of our stores, so we're able to play multi zones. You know, again, different platforms, and it, it it's super dependable. Works great. You know, the team loves it. Like you said, it's a big, big fan. We're excited to see where things potentially uh, will go as that partnership begins to unfold. Yeah, I was really excited about it because I'm a big Rune user myself. And so, you know, the thing that I like about it is it, it's kind of like having liner notes. Like if I buy an yeah, album. Exactly. Gonna, it, it, so it's basically having liner notes, except it goes a step further. And so and, and there's a ton of data out there uh, that, that I don't know how they aggregated this data, but there's just an absolute ton of it. And so if you click on an artist, you can actually see who their inspirations were. 
which is one of my favorite features because I like to just go back and you know listen to uh, you know a lot of older stuff, and so you can hear that a lot in the music, and so it kind of just takes you down that rabbit hole versus just going to the standard stuff that you play all the time because you go through like your you know Apple Music, your Spotify, your even just your Cobuzz on its own, and you're like, okay, I'm going to play the same stuff that I like to listen to, but this finds a new way to explore music which is always which is always cool because i find myself plateauing all the time so yeah, yeah that's yeah. uh i feel like i pitch rune every time we come on here <laughs> i'm not paid by rune guys i promise <laughs> i just really like the platform i've been trying to get gene into it gene's eventually going to get into rune yeah <laughs> I'm just gonna it that I'll, I'll been glow over it two years after everybody else has yeah. <laughs> that's right. well i think someone asked is it going to be limited to just harming products I, I would assume that's not going to be no 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 as no. many folks to adopt it as possible right uh, yeah there's like 160 brands i think yeah. that are are rune ready products right now that's not going to yeah. change obviously yeah. um it's and specifically to that point we knew that would be one of the concerns and everybody's like oh they bought it now but um no it, it's going to remain that open platform the way it is and as a matter of fact we've got it all set up as its own separate entity, you know, because that's one of the concerns of people sending products in to get certified and things like that. That all stays a completely separate thing. So, yeah. Very cool. No, it's exciting. I'd like, I'm, I'm ready to see what, what you guys do with it. Yeah. yeah, I think the cool part about it, for those of us that have been using it for years, you know, as you guys say, it's cool. And if, if any of the listeners have gone to an audio show, probably all of us as manufacturers are using Rune to do the demos yeah. or, audio or going line, into your store. Yeah. Or, yeah. So I think it's cool from that standpoint. The, the guys, we've known those guys for quite a while. Um, it's been a small startup and they've they've turned us into something really cool. And I think the advantage we've got now is now they've got the the resources of a company like Harman uh, behind them that they can really, you know, things that they may have wanted to do that they couldn't do before, uh, the doors are gonna open up in that respect. So, and, you know, when you think about um, uh, us, we're an audio company first and foremost. So we, we uh, encourage and support everything that they're doing in that respect and want to give them the resources to help them take it to the next level. Cool. We got time for probably two or three more questions. Nick, can you jump out or, or Chris, Jim, Gene? Hmm. They're coming in so asking. fast. I can't keep track of them. Uh, there's, still right. a lot of asking, there's still a lot of people asking about the class G. Um, I just want to clear up. You guys do use a linear power supply on that, which is great. Correct. And the, the class G switching is so good that I barely could detect a switchover point in the audio precision. If you look at my measurements, you see a little blip right around 25 watts, which is why when I sent it to you guys, I said, you guys are switching right around that. And you said, yeah. So the early days of class G weren't great. I mean, you could see they were, they were just not good, but we're getting to the point now where it's so transparent and there's so many advantages to class G. You could see right there. So in that measurement, I think that's a four ohm load. Um, so the power is a little higher. So right between 25 and 30 watts, you see that little bump at the at the vertical line on the bottom. That's where it's switching over. That's how good it is. So in the early days of Class G, there'd be a huge spike there. So it's awesome because this, this amp runs almost at Class D efficiency, but you still have a linear design. That's the cross. Well, well, in that, in that crossover distortion you talk about, Gene, you know, that that is a problem with traditional class AB amplifiers because that cr crossover distortion will take place, you know, within the, the audible range. Um, yeah. Having that class G design, that cr crossover distortion is happening, but, you know, much higher frequencies that are in, in audible. Yep. And I think, as we said, too, you know, really at its heart, first of all, it's not a proprietary technology to us, but it is we're one of the only people really using it at this point in time. And our co-founder, John Dawson, has spent years and years uh, just continuing to evolve that technology and perfect it in our space. So it's also a more expensive amplifier technology. So that's why it starts at the A25 in this range. The A5 and the A15 are still traditional class AB. So while G is could be considered a variant of AB, it, it really operates more like a class A amplifier in terms of the majority of its operation. And when you think about 20 watts of power, most people in there listening are never exceeding 20 watts mm -hmm. of power at you know, most of the listening levels. And so when you really start to push beyond that and you need that extra dynamic capability, that extra headroom that you saw in the measurements there, it's there. So it's a very low distortion, very clean amplifier. You know, one of the, the things that you would have with the traditional class A amplifier is yes, they, they're low distortion, they sound good there, but they're horribly inefficient and they yeah. don't have that high dynamic capability because they just run out of gas because they're running wide open throttle 
all the time. So that's the beauty of this is that second set of rails gives us that dynamic capability. So we get the benefits of the class A, but you get the huge power capabilities that you would have from an AB or even a D design. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in that respect. But again, it's it can be a more expensive technology to implement. So you'll you'll not find it on on a, a lot of lower price products. And A25 is where we start with it in the radio range. Yeah, it's a more complex design, more parts. Much more. You, yeah. Your multi-channel amps all are, I think all your multi-channel amps are class G, like the RCAM ones, right? Uh, well, in a case like, so we mentioned earlier, he's got an A31 or AVR31. So that is a G class uh, AVR. But if, if you just look, you know, one quick way to just see how much more expensive that amplifier technology is, if you compare our AVR21 to AVR31, that's the same AVR. The difference is one's an AB amp and one's a G amp. And you can see that's about a $2,000 difference at retail price point, but that is because mm -hmm. of the amplification and the quality that's in there. But the nice thing about it is, is we've seen, uh, we use that in our JBL synthesis range as well too. So the SDR38 is a G-class uh, AVR. And we've seen now you can run these big elaborate immersive audio theater systems off just the AVR because it's that capable in terms of a power amp. So when you're doing uh, systems that aren't huge, you know, channel counter, huge rooms and cost is maybe more of a consideration where you're not going to want to have the cost of a separate preamp and a stack of amplifiers. Now you've got an AVR that's capable of of really outperforming some of those entry level processor and amplifiers in that case. So but you can see again at the price delta between a 21 and a 31 what that G class technology costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. and I think there's like this weird confusion, and, and and this is just how people think of it. They think of it as a tiers with amplifiers. So it's like class A being A tier, you know, the absolute best. Oh, well, yeah, and yeah, and so there's just like this thing in the back of the head, like, well, that's actually past D. And so <laughs> no, I, it, and so that's what I I, I spend a lot of time explaining class G because I'm a huge class G fan, and yeah, uh, yeah so it's it's a, absolutely phenomenal. Every time you guys have implemented, it, it's been very good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, yeah, you, again, if you ever want to read up on this stuff and go down the rabbit hole of amplifier uh, topologies that, but yes, A is one, B is one, A, B is one, because it's a combination of the two. D is one, G is one, H is one. There's so many yeah. different uh, topologies of amplification that you could do, and it's yep. just different in the way they operate, but. Well, you, not to, not to shame the uh, plug. Oh, I was going to say, you mentioned the A25 now being our most affordable current RCAM product. Uh, it is the holiday season. Uh, I would be remiss to say that the uh, predecessor, the SA20, uh, I believe is on sale right now for $9.99. Right. The most, right. most affordable, I mean, Class G, we're talking, we're talking about this technology, this incredible sounding technology. So a little yeah. little plug to the SA20 at, at $9.99. Absolutely. Great deal. Available at audiovice.com. For sure. Gene, you had one more comment? Yeah, just to tell you, in my not to shamelessly plug my test report, but I knew yeah. that this question would come up with class G. So I linked up all the different classes of amplifiers, the pros and cons of each. I, we wrote an article years ago, and it's very popular. It's in the test report if you guys want to read more about the different classes of amplification. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, well, yeah sure and you can... You can find some additional information on the RCAM website too, rcam.co.uk, because that same thing as Gene says, the question comes up a lot. I, what is G? I've never heard of it. I don't understand it. So there's a quick overview, kind of a short white paper that people can read on the Very RCAM cool. site. So check them both out. Check Gene's story. Check ours. We're up against time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Nick, let's, you got the best question uh, winner. You want to let everyone know yeah. that <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's me. I get the stream. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. It's, uh, well, nice try. It's nice uh, Rowan Gamer TV. And this was actually something that I learned while watching this. So this is why I picked this. So, is the DAC better in the ST5 or the A25? So I really like this question. Sparks cool conversation. So Rowan Gamer, reach out to us. And uh, or Jonathan, that's right. They reach out to us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Get and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up with a new streamer. Congrats. Very cool. Well, in the spirit of, uh, we'll announce our winner here in just a second, <clears throat> but in the spirit of, you know, coming out of Thanksgiving, I just want to make, take a second to make sure that one, thank you to the folks at Harmon. They're obviously one of our uh, most important partners and uh, can't thank you guys enough, Chris, Jim, for joining us tonight and just for your support as a brand. And thank you one for to everyone who's watching. You know, we really appreciate it. It's been just a great year for audio advice. We appreciate all the support, both in our stores in Raleigh and Charlotte. We've got more to come down that road. And then also uh, just nationally, you know, the support of our YouTube channel, 
and our online business. It's just been fantastic. So thank you, everyone. We really, really appreciate it uh, for supporting us this year and uh, many great things to come. So, and if you are already subscribed to Gene's channel, be sure to check it out. Audioholics is a great channel, plethora of information, as you can tell. Gene's got some just fantastic com content. He's a great, great thought leader. Um, one of the best out there that I make sure I follow all of his content as well. So before we announce our winner, be sure to uh, tune in next month. We're going to have special guest, <coughs> excuse me, Andrew Jones will be joining us. If you don't know Andrew, he's a pretty well-known speaker designer. will be from MoFi who will be uh, talking about the new Source Point 8. So be sure to check that out. And if you would join me in a drum roll, please, we will announce our winner. Let me pull it up here. Our certified results from Plano, Texas. I've got Matthew McGill. Oh, we've got like two drummers on it. On, on yes. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we got Matthew McGill from Texas, who is our lucky winner of the new RCAM radio series. Congratulations. What an awesome, awesome giveaway. The A25 and the ST5, $2,300 wow. of value. Really, really cool. Uh, congratulations. We will make sure that we get that out to you again real soon. Again, the next giveaway is up and live on the website. So again, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jim. Nick, thank you for joining us as well. And Gene, always great to have you again. Happy thank holidays you. to everyone. And we will see you again real soon. Thank you all.